world suffers from shock of Trump victory. Here's what happens next to the MSM and the economy. We're continuing the article by Brandon Smith on the Daily Sheeple. After we spoke of how special interests such as the global elites or the globalists are suffering because of first the Brexit victory and now the Trump victory and how the MSM, the mainstream media, has gone from realistic journalism to becoming a political puppet. Now we're going into the death of the mainstream media and how the crippling of social justice warriors is taking place. The SJW cult is not dead, but it has been crippled. It's now a drooling, bedridden quadriplegic, eating its meals through a straw, a malfunctioning shell of a movement destined to be put out of its misery. When I think of social justice warriors, I think of the island of misfit toys. Nobody wants these people. They are a detriment to everything they touch, including the Democratic Party. It was the zealotry of the social justice warriors, the SJWs, that caused conservatives to rally in anger around Trump. It was they that awakened the sleeping giant. One reason I was so certain Clinton had set herself up for a loss was her insistence that the Democrats openly adopt these health spawn and their ideology. By embracing politically correct rhetoric and accusing all opposition of being deplorable racists, quote unquote, sexists and homophobes, Clinton doomed her campaign from the very beginning. Anyone with any sense could see that the massive tide against SJWs growing on the internet. In fact, I propose that the globalists used the advanced web and analytics at their disposal, saw it even before the rest of us did. SJWs are a tiny minority in American society. Their only strategy has been to use Alinsky tactics to make their movement appear much larger than it really is. Through mutual aid and holistic supporters in popular media, SJWs presented a fabricated consensus. They made it seem as though they were the majority view and thus the superior view. One fantastic result of the 2016 election has been the realization by conservatives that they are not isolated on the fringes of society. In fact, in America at least, we are a considerable force to be reckoned with. There is an old story of a Roman senator 2000 years ago who suggested the idea of forcing slaves to wear armbands to make them easily identifiable. Another senator admonished the notion saying, no, if they realize how many of them they really are, they may revolt. So this is what election 2016 did for the conservatives. We had seen that millions of us have armed bands and we are now in revolt. I rarely comment on race issues because I don't really see race as very relevant in most, most cases, but it has been the tactic of social justice cultists to constantly and brutally target straight white males as the monsters of history and therefore responsible for the ills and failures of every minority group from today to eternity. At this point, I think it's safe to say that we will no longer sit idly by as wimpy boys for sad, deluded people clamoring for victim group status. The end of mainstream polling. I was confident in my prediction of Trump of a Trump win based on my knowledge of inconsistencies in modern polling methods. The fact of the matter is polling suffers from the same lack of objectivity that any other quote unquote science can at times suffer from. The results will always be vulnerable to influence from the observer. If the observer wants a particular outcome for the numbers, they will consciously or unconsciously rig their method to produce the desired result. I saw this happen time and time again during the Brexit polls leading up to the referendum. And as I stated many times before the US election, the campaign polls seem to be behaving the same way. This is how you get media sources like Reuters claiming a 90% chance of a win by Hillary Clinton just before the election. 
when pollsters weigh their polls with far more Democrats than Republicans, and when they poll the same group repeatedly, they are not going to get varied or honest data. In the end, polls become propaganda tools rather than litmus tests. The mainstream has tried desperately to explain why their polls were so utterly, utterly wrong, but it's too late for them. After the Brexit and the US election, no one is going to trust these numbers again. Liberty groups will get some breathing room for a little while. The steady drumbeat of government antagonism for patriot groups is probably going to subside for a short time. And I happen to know that many militia groups and preparedness networks are breathing a heavy sigh of relief today. After eight years of a hostile Obama presidency, the IRS snipping at liberty organizations and individual activists based purely on political zealotry, the DHS profiling liberal activists as terrorists and the SPLC frothing at the mouth like rabid animals looking to use their ties to the feds as a means to sink their teeth into any conservative with the guts to refuse participation in the mainstream narrative. With conservatives launching into 2017 with complete control of the government and a Trump mandate, it will seem that liberty groups have won the fight and have nothing to worry about. That said, don't get too comfortable, folks, because now we are going to discuss my negative predictions going into next year. The final stage of economic collapse. Economic collapse is a process, not a single event. Stock markets play only a minor part in the process. Most Americans' only relation to the economy is through the daily rise and fall of the Dow Jones. If they see the Dow in the green, they go on with their day. If they see the Dow in the red, they stop and question what's happening. The election of Donald Trump has surprised many with a sudden rise rather than the fall in stock markets. But as I told my readers before the election, it would be wise to wait a couple of weeks before trying to analyze these markets because that is how long it will take just to absorb the election results. I predict first that central banks around the globe will further cut stimulus measures and that the Fed is now guaranteed to raise interest rates, probably in December before Trump even enters the White House. I also believe that the process of initiating a market crisis will take approximately six months to become widely visible to the public. As a consequence of the Fed pulling the plug on markets, I predict Trump and the Fed will enter into open hostilities against each other, which will erode international faith in the US dollar as a world reserve currency. By extension, Trump's presence in the White House will exasper exacerbate already existing tensions with Saudi Arabia the Saudi 9-11 bill is just the beginning. As a result, I believe Saudi Arabia will dump the US dollar as the petrol currency, influencing numerous other OPEC nations to do the same. And I believe this will happen by early 2018. In my view for now, oil prices will be the best indicator of where stocks are headed in the next few months. This is not something many, many Trump supporters want to hear, the response in the liberty movement to my prediction is that the elites would allow Trump into office was rather predictable as well. In my article, Why the US Election Has the Entire World Confused, I stated, I have not taken this position just to be contrary. If I think about it honestly, my position is truly a losing position. If I am mistaken the Clint and Clinton win on the 8th, then I'll probably never hear the end of it, but that's just a risk that has to be taken because what I see here is a move on the chessboard that others are not considering. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. That said, if I'm right, then I still lose because Trump supporters and half the liberty movement will be so enraptured that they will probably ignore the greater issue, that Trump is the candidate the elites wanted all along. This seems to be the reaction from about half the liberty movement so far. A general blind faith and bias, clinging to the idea that the election, just like the Brexit, was a victory, and that conservatives had just won the culture war and defeated the globalists. It's funny how it wasn't much of a controversy when everyone thought 
I was wrong about Trump winning in the first place. There are two primary army arguments that come up with these people. First, that my view on the influence of the elites is unrealistic and that the elites would have to be omnipotent in order to succeed in directing the outcome of these event events so effectively. I will address this argument in detail in my next article on the Trump presidency and what the consequences will be for us if all Trump turns out not to be constitutionalists. The second argument they present is that the elites will never succeed in blaming Trump and conservatives for an economic crisis that was decades in the making. To the people that embrace this argument, I say, I understand mass psychology far better than you do. The reality is, half of America is already primed to blame Trump for everything that happens over the next four years, if we even make it that long. Possession is nine-tenths of the law in the minds of many. Beyond that, every mem in the global media and on the left is promoting the idea that Trump is an apocalypse in the making. Even Germany's Der Spiegel published its after-election magazine with a cover depicting Trump's head as a giant comet hurling towards the earth. Don't tell me that Trump cannot be blamed for economic crisis. Only a complete idiot would suggest that he is anything other than the perfect scapegoat. At bottom, it does not matter whether people believe the above predictions or not. I have hundreds of emails from readers who called me a tinfoil hatter in the past and are now apologizing. So if you plan to react in a knee-jerk fashion in the notion that Trump and conservatives are being set up by the elites for a final financial flagration, flagellation, be sure to write two letters. One for today saying, I've lost touch, and the other for tomorrow when you find out that I was right once again. This article is by Brandon Smith of Alt Market, and it originally appeared in Personal Liberty, and now it's on the Daily Sheeple. I'll leave a link below for you for this. Thank you.